What is buffering? To start, let's illustrate the role of buffering with a diagram. Here we have the basic architecture for sending data to a PI Data Archive server, with a data source, a PI interface, and the PI Data Archive server itself. The PI interface reads data from the data source, then sends that data to the PI Data Archive. But what happens if the PI Data Archive server is unavailable? For example, there could be a network outage or an unexpected failure, or maybe we're performing maintenance or upgrades on the PI Data Archive. The PI interface will no longer be able to send data, and any data events that the interface sends at this time, like this one event at 307, will not be historized on the PI Data Archive. This is where buffering comes into play. With buffering configured, that event, which would have been lost, is now stored locally on the PI interface machine instead. Once the availability of the PI Data Archive is restored, the events stored by buffering will then be sent to the PI Data Archive. With PI Buffer Subsystem, buffering is not limited to PI interfaces, and any SDK application which sends data is also capable of being buffered. Apart from preventing data loss, buffering with PI Buffer Subsystem also helps ensure data integrity among PI Data Archive collective members. The data goes to PI Buffer Subsystem instead of directly to the PI Data Archive. PI Buffer Subsystem then marks the data events for compression, as well as replicates them to each collective member. If the PI Data Archive collective member is available, PI Buffer Subsystem will then send the events to the members. As we can see, the compressed data on both members is identical, ensuring that the same data is available to clients regardless of which member it is accessing the data from. So the advantages of buffering, one, it protects against data loss when PI Data Archive is unavailable, Two, it performs compression tests for data on the interface or client machine instead of the PI Data Archive, and this therefore allows three, that the data is the same on all members of a PI Data Archive collective. The two mechanisms for buffering are API Buffer Server and PI Buffer Subsystem. API Buffer Server is older technology, while the PI Buffer Subsystem is newer and still currently actively being developed. API Buffer Server can buffer to multiple PI Data Archives, and with PI Buffer Subsystem starting with version 4.3 and above, it can also do the same. API Buffer Server cannot buffer SDK applications, while PI Buffer Subsystem can, and therefore PI Buffer Subsystem is recommended for any machine that writes data to the PI Data Archive. This makes it the best option for most scenarios. API Buffer Server can still be used if you're sending data to PI Data Archive versions previous to 3.4.375 or buffering interfaces in non-Windows environments. In this series, we have six videos covering the topic of buffering with PI Buffer Subsystem. We have videos going over the installation of PI Buffer Subsystem, upgrading PI Buffer Subsystem from both a previous version and also API Buffer Server, how to configure buffering for PI interfaces, configuring buffering for SDK applications, and finally, how to do basic checks for health status, test, and troubleshooting for buffering.